is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. All right. We pray that each one of you had a wonderful weekend. Pray that each one of you had a wonderful weekend. We had a wonderful weekend. Uh, we had the prison ministry on last night. It was incredible. A uh, standing room only once again. Uh, but this time we had the youth offenders. And when they came in, it brought tears to my eyes to see how uh, some of these kids were only 12 years old. Uh, we usually deal with the adult population, but uh, they allowed the youth to be there in their own section. So uh, I take it, I don't take it lightly what we do. Good morning, James. Blessings to you. Pray that you had a wonderful weekend. Uh, so we minister at the largest women's prison in the country. And last night, they allowed the youthful offenders, which are 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. They allowed them to be there. And what an honor. What an honor. I was thinking of that I have grandchildren that age. And to uh, thank God and pray over those young ladies last night. So... Continue to pray for us as we go and take the light of the gospel into uh, dark places, into dark places. So I look forward to doing uh, the prison ministry. Uh, so we got home almost 11 o'clock last night, but we thank God for the opportunity to pour into those young ladies. So it was tremendous. So thank you. And uh, when you remember us, please call out their names. Our next uh, thing we're going to do is to be able to provide transitional homes, housing for those ladies who come out and also for uh single moms, also for people in transit. So uh, we're excited about that. Good morning, Evangelist Bryant. Uh, Evangelist Bryant was with me last night. She shared her testimony, uh, and it was a blessing. She was able to minister to so many of the women. So we thank God for that. One of these days, uh, maybe some of you who have... Uh, a desire to go into the prison. Uh, we'll be able to get your PIN number and then you'll be able to come in. Okay. So they have it where you have to do a training once a year, which is always good. But we are grateful to God for the opportunity. Okay. All right. Write this down, please. Write this down. Uh, Write down the word poverty, poverty. Write down the word poverty, <laughs> poverty, poverty. Write down the word poverty, good. A working definition for the word poverty is when you use all your resources for one generation. When you spend all your resources on one generation, the Bible says a good man or a woman leaves an inheritance for their children's children. Okay, Poverty is when you spend all of your resources on one generation. The Bible said a good man or a woman leaves an inheritance for their children's children. And we need to help 
the next generation so that everybody is not starting from start. And many times what happens is everybody is starting over because the prior generation doesn't leave anything for the next generation. So everybody's starting from start. And my prayer for you is that God bless you. God bless you so you will do like the Bible says. You will leave an inheritance for your children's children. Okay? That God will bless you so much and that you will be the one who transfers wealth from one generation to two generations. He said, I am the God of who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is a generational God. And God wants you, he commands you and I to leave an inheritance for our children's children. So that means it is possible so that your children don't start at start, your grandchildren don't start at start, okay? We want to, come on, make this confession. I am a transferer of wealth. I am a transferer of wealth. I am a transferer of wealth. I distribute wealth from one generation to another generation to multiple generations, okay? We want to be able to distribute wealth, okay? Multi-generational, okay? And most of the time, no one left you anything, so you're not able to pass anything on, okay? And if someone left you something, then you need to take that and multiply it. And then when you leave your legacy, then you should make sure that they are not, uh, that there are families, the Rockefellers, the Kennedys, there are families, uh, the old saying, when you are born with a silver spoon in your mouth, so to speak, that there are people who will walk into generational wealth and they will literally not have to do anything but just be born and have that last name. And when they come into this world, they have wealth passed down so they get a head start. Okay, good. Father, we thank you right now for uh, overshadowing Wendy with your power, your presence. Thank you that she is healed, whole, and healthy. Good. Yeah. So they're just born into that wealth. Okay. So we thank God that we will be distributors of wealth for the glory of God. Okay. Write this down, please. Write this down. Catch this. Wealth is quiet. Wealth is quiet. Rich is loud. Poor is flashy. Let me say that again. Good morning. God bless you, Kiana. God bless you, Sister Stringer. Pray that you both had a wonderful weekend. Okay. Write this down as you come on. Good morning. Wealth is quiet. Good, James. Rich is loud. Poor is flashy. Wealth is quiet. Rich is loud. Poor is flashy. Wealth is quiet. Rich is loud. Poor is flashy. Those who are wealthy, most of the time you will not know it by what they wear. You will not know it by what they drive because wealth, good Lois, is quiet. Rich is loud, but poor is flashy. The poor are those who try to impress other people, try to make people think you have something that you're not trying to... Uh, create an appearance 
of something that's not substance. Because when you are wealthy, you don't have to try to prove it to anybody. Because whether you prove it to them or not, you're still wealthy. Good morning, Tony. Blessings to you. We pray that you had a wonderful weekend. Blessings to each one of you. Hallelujah. Write down those two words, please. Write down those two words, please. Poverty, prosperity. Poverty, prosperity. Poverty, prosperity. Thank you. Shakisha, thank you. Poverty, prosperity. Poverty, prosperity. Poverty, prosperity. Good. Poverty, prosperity. Okay. Good, thank you. When we lived in South Carolina... People love to drink sweet tea. When we lived in New York, people love to drink hot tea. This morning, I want to ask you a question. What type of tea do you drink? Do you drink sweet tea? Do you drink hot tea? Do you drink poverty? Or do you drink prosperity? Because prosperity is the sweet tea. See? When you walk in prosperity, that is the true sweet tea. God wants you and I to live in prosperity. Good. There you go. Yeah. Come on. Good. I drank hot pepper, peppermint tea. <laughs> Good. Hallelujah. Oh, watch this. Let me show you something. Oh, hallelujah. Herbal tea. Good. 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 Ginger tea. Good. Good. Excellent. Green or hot tea. Okay, good. Okay. Well, the Lord wants you to drink prosperity. God wants you to drink prosperity. Not poverty, but prosperity. Go to Job 36, 11. Job 36 and 11. Job 36 and 11. Job 36 and 11. The Bible says we are heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ. We are heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ. Job 36, 11. Good. Thank you. Job, highlight this. Job 36 and 11. Make sure you highlight that. Job 36 and 11. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. Make this declaration, I will spend my days in prosperity. I will spend my years in pleasure. Come on, make that confession. I will spend my days in prosperity. I will spend my years in pleasures. I am not trying to retire somewhere. I'm going to spend my days in prosperity I'm going to spend my years in pleasure. Hallelujah. Good, good, Tony. I will spend my days in prosperity and my years in pleasure. The Bible said if we obey and serve God, then God says your reward is that you will spend your days in prosperity 
in your years and pleasure and make that confession because I obey and serve God. I will spend my days in prosperity and my years in pleasure because of your relationship with God. You and I are supposed to be enjoying prosperity every day of our life because we serve and obey God. We're supposed to be enjoying pleasures. My God, my God, hallelujah. You're not supposed to retire and have to go back to work because you're struggling, having to go back to work to pay, uh, to have insurance because you obey and because you serve God. You will live your days in prosperity, your years in pleasure, obedience, brings prosperity. Write that down. Obedience brings prosperity. Obedience brings prosperity. When you obey, there's a blessing connected to your obedience. When you obey God, you obligate God to do what he says. Hallelujah. My God, that's good. Tap that screen, please. If you understand that, how many of you serve God? How many of you obey God? And if you obey him and if you serve him, you're supposed to be living your days in prosperity. My God, Michelle, you will live your days in prosperity. You will live your years in pleasure. James, you will live your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. Good morning, Kadir. Kiana, because you serve and obey God, you will live your days in prosperity, your years in pleasure. Lois, because you serve and obey God. Evangelist Bryant, because you serve and obey God. Tony, because you serve and obey God. Sue, because you serve and obey God. The author, because you serve and obey God, you will live your days in prosperity, your years in pleasure. My God, that's what you got to look forward. That's why the old people used to say, serving the Lord will pay off after a while. Why? Because when you serve him, he has to honor you. When you obey him, it brings prosperity to your life. Hallelujah. 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 My God. Sister Stringer, because you obey him. Shakisha, because you Honor him. Obey him. You will live your days in prosperity. Your years in pleasure. My God, that's powerful. When you understand. I will live my days in prosperity. I will live my years in pleasure. Why? Because I obey him and because I serve him. Obedience brings prosperity. Obedience brings prosperity. Obedience brings prosperity. Okay? So when you obey God, you can expect. Because your obedience obligates God. Did you know that? Your obedience obligates God. Okay? Write this down, please. Prior to every promise is a principle. Write that down. Prior to every promise is is a principle. Write that down, please. Prior to every promise is a principle. Good morning, Felicia. Blessings to you and your family. Pray that you had a wonderful weekend. Prior to every promise is a principle. That's why obedience is so powerful. Because when you obey God, you obligate him. Your obedience obligates him. Good. Good. Father, we thank you for traveling mercies for Felicia. Prior to every promise is a principle. Prior to every promise is a principle. Okay? Always remember that. Prior to every promise is a principle. If you don't apply the principle, you won't enjoy the promise. 
Let me say that again. Prior to every promise is a principle. If you don't apply the principle, you won't enjoy the promise. Good. Thank you, Shakisha. Thank you, Lois. Thank you, Evangelist. Brian, prior to every promise is a principle. If you don't apply the principle, you won't enjoy the promise. Hallelujah. You got that? Okay, good. Very important. Very important. Prior to every promise is a principle. If you don't apply the principle, you won't enjoy the promise. Go with me to Psalms 37 and 4. Psalms 37 and 4. Psalms 37 and 4. Psalms 37 and 4. Prior to every promise is a principle. If you don't apply the principle, you won't enjoy the promise. Hallelujah. Psalms 34. Psalms 34 and 4. Good. Thank you, Lois. If you don't apply the principle, you will not enjoy the promise. That's right. Okay. We're sitting back talking about I'm standing on the promises of God, but you won't even apply the principle. Okay. Psalms 34, excuse me, Psalms 37 and 4. Good. Apply the principle and enjoy the promise. Good, Michelle. Psalms 37 and 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Thank you, Brother Tony. Blessings to you and your family. Delight thyself also in the Lord, Psalms 37 and 4, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Write this down, Psalms 37 and 4. The emphasis is on delight and not desire. Okay? Okay, good. Thank you. Write this down. Thank you, Kiana. Thank you, Kadir. In Psalms 37 and 4, oh, you got the day off. Awesome. Good. Get plenty of rest and enjoy yourself. Excellent. Psalms 37 and 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Now write this down. The emphasis, thank you, Evangelist Bryant, is on delight and not desires. The emphasis is on delight and not desires. When most people quote that scripture, they put the emphasis on desires. But the emphasis is on delight. So when I delight myself, in the Lord. That's the principle. He'll give me the desires of my heart. That's the promise. You got that? See, the emphasis is on delight, not on desires. Most people say, oh, God's going to give me the desires of my heart. So you put the emphasis on desires, but in Psalms 37 and 4, the emphasis is on delight. Okay, When you Delight yourself in the Lord. Principle. He'll give you the desires of your heart. Promise. Okay. Delight yourself. Principle. Desires. Promise. Delight yourself. Principle. Desires. Promise. Okay. So when you look at the word delight, you're moving towards God. The word delight means you're moving towards God. The word desire means something is moving towards you. Okay? So if you put the emphasis on desire, then you'll focus on what's coming to you. But if you put the emphasis on delight, then 
you're moving towards God. And as you move toward God, then his desires become your desires. You got that? As you move towards God, Tony, as you move towards God, Kadia, as you move towards God, Michelle, his desires, Shakisha, become your desires. Do you see that? His desires become your desires because you are now delighting in him and now he turns your desires into his desires. So I don't want what I want. I want what he wants for me. Hallelujah. Write this down. I must choose what God has chosen for me. That's powerful. Think about that, Kadir. You must choose what God has chosen for you. Hallelujah. You must choose what God has chosen for you. Write that down. My God. If you receive and tap that screen this morning, please. My God. Good. Thank you, Lois. Thank you, Tony. Hallelujah. Good. Good. I must choose what God has chosen for me. Okay. I must choose what God has chosen for me. Why do you say that, Pastor Bryant? Hallelujah. Because if what God had for me was automatic, then I wouldn't have to choose. Apparently, what God has for me is not automatic. So I must choose it. Good. I must choose it. Good. I must choose it. Okay. Go with me to Deuteronomy 30, 19. Go with me to Deuteronomy 30, 19. Watch this. Let's look at the principle. I must choose what God has chosen for me. It's not automatic. If it's going to happen automatic, then I wouldn't have to do anything. Okay? But I must choose what God has chosen for me. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is the way of destruction. Okay, so I must choose what God has chosen for me. Watch this, Tony. Watch this, Kiana. Deuteronomy 30, 19. Watch this. I call heaven and earth to wreck it this day against you. That I have set before you life and death, blessing and in cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Do you got that? So you must choose what God has chosen for you. He put life and death before you. He put blessing and cursing before you. Then he says, you choose. And remember, remember now, you got to watch what you choose, Lois. Why? Because he said, Lois, whatever you choose is not just going to affect you. It's going to affect your seed. Did you hear me? What you choose will affect you, your seed. See? He said, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. My God. That means that what you are choosing is affecting more than just you. Kiana, that's why you got to make the right choice because your choices are affecting your seed. 
My God, Wendy, you got to make the right choice because your choices are affecting your seed. <laughs> James, we must make the right choices because our choices are affecting our seed. Shakisha, we got to make the right choices. Michelle, we've got to make the right choices. God says you can choose to live and it affect your children. You can choose to live, Evangelist Bryant, and it will cause your children to live. My God. Come on, somebody say, I choose life. Come on, somebody say, I choose life. He said, choose life. Come on, say, I choose life. I choose life. He said, I put before you blessing, cursing, life, death. And then he said, choose life. He said, choose life that both of you, you and your seed will live. Choose life. I choose life. I choose life. My God, even though it's put before me, I still got to choose it. I still got to choose it. That means it's not automatic. It's not automatic. My God, God loves you so much. God loves me so much that he gives you the opportunity to choose. He doesn't force you to choose it. He just puts both before you. So God says, if you're going to be blessed, it's because you chose it. If you're going to live, it's because you chose it. If you're going to be cursed, it's because you chose it. If you're going to die, it's because you chose it. You can choose life. Either you're speaking life to your life or you're speaking death to your life. Let me say that again. Either we are speaking life, Kadia, to life, or we're speaking death to life. Death in life, Lois, is in the power of your tongue. So daily, Michelle, you're either speaking life to your life or you're speaking death to your life. You are blessed through the words that you speak. You are cursed through the words that you speak. Death or life. So you got to choose your words wisely. Because every day you speak, every time you open your mouth, those words are life or death. And the Bible said, choose life. That both of you, you and thy seed, may live. Okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You and thy seed may live. Tap that screen if you're receiving this morning. Come on, tap that screen if you're receiving this morning. My God. Hallelujah. Come on. I must choose what God has chosen for me. Now watch this. Just like you must choose what God has chosen for you, Shakisha, watch this. Whatever level you settle for, God has to allow you to stay there. Whatever level you settle for, God must allow you to stay there. Whatever level you settle for, God must allow you to to stay there, okay? Whatever level you settle for, God must allow you to stay there. Hallelujah. Whatever level you settle for, God must allow you to stay there. Whatever level you settle for, God must allow you to stay there. Okay. Good morning, Dina. Blessings to you. Good morning. Good morning. Whatever level you settle for, God must allow you to stay there. I know you heard the song, What's for me is for me. Well, if that's true, then he would have never told you to choose. See, you've got to choose 
what God has chosen for you. All right, well, write these three words down, please. Write these three words down. Egypt, wilderness, promised land. Write those three words down. Egypt, wilderness, promised land. Egypt slash wilderness slash promised land. Egypt slash wilderness slash promised land. Pray that you had a wonderful weekend, Dina. Blessings to you and your family. Egypt slash wilderness slash promised land. Okay. Thank you, Kiana. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Now, let me ask you a question. Where did God want the children of Israel to go? What was God's promise to them? Where did God want the children of Israel to go? They were in Egypt in bondage. But God told them, I'm taking you to a land flowing with milk and honey. That was his promise to them. Okay, good. Good, Kiana. He wanted them to go to the promised land. Okay. That was what he had for them. Where did they end up? Where did they end up? After they left Egypt, where did they end up? After they left Egypt, Lois, where did they end up? Now, God wanted them to go to the promised land. Good. But they ended up in the wilderness for 40 years. You know why? Because that's what they settled for. That's what they settled for. And even though God had the promised land for them, because they settled in the wilderness, God had to allow them to stay there. God has a lot of things for us. But a lot of us are settling for less than what God has for us. And then we begin to justify why we are where we are. And we start making all kind of excuses. Well, I'm where I am because I'm a single parent. If I had some help, then I would be so much further. Who says that you have to be married? Who says that you have to have another income in order to make it. See, you believe that. See, you believe that. Good morning, Sonia. Blessings to you and your family. Pray that you had a wonderful weekend. But you've got to choose what God has for you. God wanted them to end up in the promised land. They didn't. They ended up in the wilderness. They kept complaining. They kept murmuring. They kept wandering in a circle in the wilderness. God never mentioned the wilderness. All he mentioned was the promised land. I'm bringing you into a land that's flowing with milk and honey. Let me ask you a question. How come, how come, Lois, how come they didn't go from Egypt to the wilderness? Somebody tell me that. How come, James, they didn't go from Egypt to the promised land? That's what God wanted. How come, Tony, they didn't go from Egypt to the promised land? How come, Michelle, they didn't go from Egypt to the promised land? How come? How come they never made it from Egypt to the promised land? How come? Disobedience. Good, Felicia. Good. Good, Kiana. Disobedience. Okay. Complaining. Good. Okay. Okay. I want to show you something. All those are good answers. All those are true answers. But I want to show you why they never made it from Egypt to the promised land. Go with me to Third John, Third John, Third John, chapter one, verse two. Third John, 
Third John chapter one verse two. Third John chapter one verse two. Third John chapter one verse two. Okay. Did they disobey God? Yes. Did they murmur? Yes. Did they complain? Yes. But I'm going to show you why they did all those things that stopped them from going into the promised land. And guess what, Sonia? Most of them were buried in the wilderness. Most of them were buried in the wilderness. Most of them never made it to the promised land. And this is why. Third John 1 and 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou may prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Write that down, capital letters. Even as thy soul prospers. Write that down in capital letters. Even as thy soul prospers prospers. Third John, first chapter, second verse. Write that down, capital letters. Even as thy soul prospers. Good. That is the key, Felicia. That is the key, Sonia. That is the key, Lois. Even as thy soul prospers. Most people claim Prosper in health. See, most people claim the first part of the verse. They claim, God wants me to prosper. God wants me to be in health. But you didn't read the other part. God wants me to prosper. God wants me to be in health. You didn't read the second part. Even as thy soul prospers. Guess what? There will not be life prosperity without soul prosperity. Write that down. There is no life prosperity without soul prosperity. You can't claim the first part without doing the second part. The Lord is saying you'll never prosper in life You'll never be healthy if your soul does not prosper. Your health and your prosperity is contingent on your soul prosperity. See, so you're trying to get prosperity in your hands, but true prosperity is in your soul. And until your soul prospers, your life will not prosper. Until your soul prospers, your life will not prosper. Until your soul prospers, your life will not prosper. Lord have mercy. Let me say it again. Until your soul prospers, your life will not prosper. Well, how does my soul prosper? I'm so glad you asked. Because the key ingredient in your soul is your mind. And the reason why you're not prospering in life because your thinking is off. And the reason why the children of Israel could not go into the promised land because of a mindset. Good God Almighty. Their mindset would not allow them to go into the promised land. Let me say it this way. My God. Watch this. A slavery mentality cannot go into a promised land. A Egyptian mentality cannot go into the promised land. And because they were affected by 400 years of slavery, they had a messed up mind. And that mindset did not allow them to go into the promised land. It was a mindset and what's stopping you is a mindset. What's stopping you is a mindset. It's not that God hasn't promised you the promised land. 
The promised land is ready. You're not ready. It's your mindset. And because you don't prosper in your soul, you're not prospering in life. The Bible said Caleb and Joshua operated in a different spirit. Therefore, they were allowed to go into the promised land. Everybody else was buried in the wilderness because they refused to change their mind. They refused to change their mind. They refused to change their mind. And some of you, you refuse to change your mind. And it doesn't matter what God has for you, you will never get it. And whatever level you settle for, that is where you're going to end up. They settled for the wilderness and they got buried in the wilderness. Let me say it again. They settled for the wilderness and they got buried in the wilderness. They settled for the wilderness. They got buried in the wilderness because they refused to change their mind. Good. Good, good. God help me to renew my mind. Good, that's right. Good, yeah. See, you've got to prosper in your soul, okay? Soul, soul. Write that word down, soul. The soul is made up of five components. The soul is made up of five components. Write that word down, soul, because uh, we always put the emphasis on prosper and in health without connecting the second part. Even as thy soul prospers. See, just because you say, I'm going to be in health and I'm going to prosper. No, even as and according to the prosperity of your soul, the soul has five components. Okay, write this down your mind, write this down your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect, and your imagination, your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect, your imagination, your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect, your imagination. See? I prosper, Lois, and I'm in health, Lois, even as, Sonia, my soul prospers. Mind, will, emotions, intellect, and imagination. Okay? My God. Got that? Your mind, how you think, your will, what you do, your emotions, how you feel. See? And, and, and that is what's stopping us, Lois, from going to the promised land. Our mindset. How we think, our will, what we do, our emotions, how we feel. That is where the deficit is. Because they had the wrong mindset. They didn't see themselves as giants. Because they, uh, the feelings, they kept complaining. They kept murmuring. Hallelujah. Lord, have mercy. Your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect, your imagination. See? Can you see yourself there? Can you see yourself here? Can you see yourself wealthy? That's right. Yeah. 
Yeah. But we refuse to change our mind. See? So we think we quote a bunch of scriptures and it's automatic. You should know by now. It's not automatic. Because if it was automatic, guess what? You would already be there. But we refuse... Write this down, capital letters, transformation takes place in the mind. Come on. Transformation takes place in the mind. Transformation takes place in the mind. The quality of my thinking will determine the quality of my life. The quality, thank you Lois, of my thinking will determine the quality of my life. Thank you, Tony. The quality of my thinking will determine the quality of my life. That is what the scripture is saying in 3 John. The quality of your thinking will determine the quality of your life. If you don't prosper in your soul, you won't prosper in your life because transformation takes place in your mind. It takes place in your mind. My God. Hallelujah. The quality of your thinking will determine the quality of your life. You don't have quality in your thinking. Watch this. Watch this. Hallelujah. I feel like, my God. My God. Let Oh, God, I bless you. Okay? Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Okay? The quality of your thinking, okay, determines the quality. Go to Romans. Go to Romans chapter 12, please. Can I, can I teach? Can I teach, Lois? I feel like preaching, but can I teach? Romans chapter 12. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Romans chapter 12. Very familiar passage. Romans chapter 12. Okay. Okay. Let me ask you this question first. In the book of Romans, who is Paul talking to? In the book of Romans, who is Paul talking to? In the book of Romans, who is Paul talking to? First of all, in the book of Romans, who is Paul talking to? Well, let me show you. Romans chapter 1, verse number 7. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, good. So I want you to realize Paul is talking to people who are already saved. Write that down. Write that down. Paul is talking to people who are already saved. Okay? He's talking to people who are already saved. Okay? He's talking to the saints at Rome. He's talking to the saints at Rome. Okay? Watch this. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Paul is talking to the saints at Rome who are saved. And he says to them, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Now watch this, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may be able to prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Okay? Write this down. Be ye transformed 
by the renewing of your mind. That's the part I want you to catch. Write that down. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Come on. My God, you are about to be set free this morning. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Who is he talking to? People who are saved. And he's telling them, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Thank you, Shakisha. Thank you, Lois. Thank you, Tony. Watch this. So if he's saying, be transformed by the renewing of the mind, then salvation does not bring the renewing of the mind. Uh-oh. Did you catch that? If he's telling saved people to be transformed by the renewing of the mind, that must mean that when you get saved, your mind is not automatically transformed. If you got to transform it, that means that salvation affects your heart, but not your mind. Uh-oh. So you can have a right heart and a messed up mind. Lord have mercy. Hear me. You can have a right heart and a messed up mind. You can have a right heart and be saved, but your mind be messed up. Therefore, there's no transformation. The transformation comes when you renew your mind. And a lot of people go to an altar, they get saved, but they never renew their mind. The renewing of the mind is a daily process. And you can have a saved heart and a messed up mind. Oh, God. Because the renewing of the mind is not automatic. It's something you've got to choose. Thank you, Michelle. A right heart, but a messed up mind. No transformation. He said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why do you think people come to church, they get saved, but we never tell them what's next. Now that I'm saved, what's next? Because it's not automatic. I know you heard the song, I looked at my hands, they look new. I looked at my feet, they did too. That is a lie. Salvation doesn't change your hands. Salvation doesn't change your feet. Salvation doesn't change your outward. Salvation works on the inside. It works on the inside. My God. But now, in order to be transformed, you've got to renew your mind, which is daily. Which is daily. Which is daily. Okay? Okay? The renewing of the mind is a daily process. Write that down. The renewing of the mind is a daily process. The renewing of the mind is a daily process. Good, good, Shakisha, yeah. But see, people don't tell you that. And, and, and I remember as a child, how many of you remember this? I remember as a child, the preacher used to say, give God your heart, give the preacher your hand. Give God your heart, give the preacher your hand. Give God your heart, give the preacher your hand. Yeah, now that I gave you my heart, okay? But the Bible says, with my mind, I will serve the Lord. With my mind, I will serve the Lord. Write this down. My God, see? Transformation takes place, we're at, in the mind. Transformation takes place in the mind, okay? I'm going to drop this on you, and then I'm going. Tap that screen if you're receiving this morning. Thank you. Tap that screen if you're receiving. If you were encouraged, enlightened, empowered this morning, 
My God, what God gave us this morning, that'll set you free right there. That'll set you free right there. You've got to choose what God has chosen for you. The quality of your thinking determines the quality of your life. And you will only prosper in life according to your soul prospering. If you never change your mind, you'll never see the prosperity. You'll never see the prosperity if you don't change how you think. And the children of Israel never changed how they thought. Therefore, they never made it to the promised land. It wasn't that God didn't want them to go there. They refused to change. And you cannot take a slavery mentality into your promised land. You cannot take a slavery mentality into your promised land. Hallelujah. 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 Write this down. Capital letters, please. Meditate on this today. Write it down. Capital letters. The renewed mind reconnects me to my original mind. Come on. Write that down. The renewed mind reconnects me to my original mind. The renewed mind reconnects me to my original mind. That is why the Bible mandates me to renew my mind because the renewed mind, Lois, reconnects me, Tony, to my original mind. Kiana, Sonia, Michelle, when I renew my mind, Shakisha, it reconnects me to my original mind. My God, Lord have mercy. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ. What do you mean? Why do I have to renew my mind? Because every man was in Adam. And when Adam fell, Felicia, we lost our mind. Good God Almighty. Because we were in Adam, when he fell, we lost our mind. And then we got to renew our mind. And when we renew our mind, we get our original mind back. Adam thought like God. Adam acted like God. But when Adam sinned, he lost his mind. And when he lost his mind, good God Almighty, he no longer acted like God. He no longer did things like God. So Christ had to come, what? To restore what Adam lost. So when Christ came, we got back what Adam lost. My God. And now the Bible says you have the mind of Christ. Lord have mercy. Do you believe that? When you got born again, he gave you the mind of Christ. But now you've got to let this mind be in you. You've got to give that mind permission to operate in your life. When your carnal mind tries to take over, you've got to say, mind of God, I give you permission, my God, because your carnal mind will fight against your original mind. All right, let me go. Hallelujah. My God. My God. Boy, I can't wait until we start our Bible college. My God, I can't wait until we start that Bible college. All right, if you receive this morning, tap that screen, please. If you receive, yeah, the carnal mind will fight against your original, yeah. Because see, your original mind, Tony, tells you who you are in Christ, but your carnal mind says that's not so. Your original mind tells you what you can have, and then your carnal mind says not so. Your original mind tells you what you can do, Shakisha, and then your carnal mind says, you know you can't do that. See? But your original mind says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And so the renewing of the mind is causing your spirit and your mind to be connected. The, see, the renewing process causes your spirit and your mind to be one. 
When you renew your mind, it's your spirit in your mind becoming one. So you are not no longer driven by your mind. You are now led by your spirit. Uh-oh. Did you catch that? When you renew your mind, you're no longer driven by your mind. You are now led by your spirit because your spirit and your mind are one. Your spirit and your mind are one because you have now submitted your mind to your spirit. And then once you do that, Lois, your body has to follow. Let me say that again. When you submit your mind to your spirit, then your body has to follow. You are spirit, soul, and body. You are spirit, soul, and body. And when you submit your mind, your soul, to your spirit, your body has to follow. Lord have mercy. All right. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. See, your carnal mind tries to drive you. It drives you through impulses. But your original mind leads you. See? Your original mind leads you. Your carnal mind drives you. Your original mind leads you. That's your spirit. But your carnal mind drives you through emotions, through impulses. See, people are emotional. People are impulsive. But when you renew your mind, you are now led by the Spirit. And those who are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. All right, God bless you. Good, awesome. All right, God bless you. We want to thank God for you all joining us this morning. Those of you who want to be a blessing to our sister, Tina, okay? Did you get the email concerning how you can go on the website to do it? There was a little, uh, there was a little, uh, the email I sent out before the link wasn't connecting, right? But some people were able to get through. Those of you who wanted to be a blessing to Tina through the link of the registry, were you able to do that? If not, let me know, please. Those of you who wanted to be a blessing with Tina with the housewoman registry, were you able to get on the registry and purchase an item there? Let me know before I get off. Because some people were having problems doing that. I was having a problem doing it myself. But then I was able to get on there. Okay. So let me know. Those of you who want it to be a blessing. Okay. To her. By going on the registry. Okay. Let me know. All right. Remember. Do something today. I got through. Good. Kadir. Thank you so much. Okay. Good. Do something today to increase your value. Number two, keep seed in the ground. Number three, keep a joyful attitude. Number four, use your words to frame your world. Okay? We love you. We honor you. We thank God for each one of you. If you were blessed by this scope this morning, write that word in capital letters, blessed. If you were blessed by this teaching this morning, write the word blessed. Matter of fact, I feel like doing something this morning. I feel like doing a recap. Let's do a recap this morning. Let's do a recap. If you were blessed this morning, let's do a recap. Write down one thing that you learned this morning. One thing that blessed you through the teaching. One thing or anything that blessed you through the teaching this morning. Let's do a review this morning. Let's do a review. Anything that bless you through the teaching this morning, let's do a review. We used to do this all the time, but let's do a review this morning. Let me see if you grabbed hold to the teaching. Anything 
Transformation of the mind. Good, Kadia, good. My soul has to prosper before my health can. Good, excellent, that's right. Yep. Soul prosperity before life prosperity. God allows you to choose. He doesn't force your way of life. Good, I choose life. Good, Kiana, awesome, good. You've got to choose what God has chosen for you. It's not automatic. You've got to choose what God has chosen for you. Good. Oh, this blesses me when we do that review. Anybody else? Anything that bless you through the scope this morning? Anything that you learned through the teaching that bless you? I got time. Let me know. Anything? God bless you, Pastor. Thank you. Oh, okay, good, Tony. A renewed mind is a prosperous mind. Yes, it is, Lois. Good. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. The renewed mind reconnects me to my original mind. Okay. What is that? The mind of Christ. To get to the promised land, your mind must be renewed. Good. Kadia. Excellent. Excellent. That's right. You can't take an Egyptian mindset into a promised land. Okay. You can't take an Egyptian mindset into the prime. I cannot go into my new season with the old mindset. Excellent, Sonia. Excellent. We drink all types of tea, but God wants us to choose prosperity. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kiana. Go ahead. Good, Tony. The renewing of the mind is daily. Good. The renewing of the mind is daily. Good. Excellent. Excellent. Now we need to talk about how do you renew your mind, okay? I know I'm supposed to renew my mind, but how do I renew my mind? Let's talk about that, okay? Because people know, oh, I got to renew my mind, but how do you do that? How do you do that? I must renew my mind daily to enter into the problem. Good, excellent, okay? Good, now we're going to find out how... Do we renew our mind? How do we renew our mind? Okay. There's a process. What is the process to renew my mind? Okay. Renew. It comes from the word renovate. It comes from the word renovate. Renew. Renovate. Okay. Good. We'll talk about that. Not today. All right. We love you. We appreciate you. We honor you. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, consider sowing into our ministry. You can go to our website, okay? Uh, you will help us help other people. As you know, we have so many outreaches that God is allowing us to go into the prison. God is allowing us to deal with battered women. God is allowing us to deal with broken people. God is allowing us to deal with the homeless, and we are excited. Thank you, Michelle, for putting up our website, all right? It is an honor and a privilege for us to call me when ministry is over. Okay, blessings to you. All right, we love you all. Have a victorious day. Have a fruitful day. Have a productive day. I prosper as my soul prospers. Good, Tony. That's right. That's powerful. I am so encouraged by your feedback, each one of you. Your feedback is tremendous. We've got to do more of this. We used to do this all the time, review, but it's so much of a blessing when when I hear you play back what we've talked about. So this has been a blessing. Also continue to pray for Evangelist Bryant. She will be on CTN this week doing her interview. So pray for her. Uh, this Wednesday is her interview. She will be, the Lord will be bringing her on before the world, millions of people. So we thank God for this opportunity, and we thank God that when she gets on there, the boldness and the power and the might of the Holy Spirit will guide her. All right, we love you all. We speak blessings over you and your family. Okay, remember, choose life, Sonia, that you and your seed may live. Choose life, Michelle, that you and your seed may live. Choose life, Kiana, that you and your seed may live. Choose life, Tony, that you and your seed may live. Choose life, James, that you and your seed may live. Choose life, Lois, that you and your seed may live.
Thank you so much for your prayers. We receive them and we thank God for them. All right. We love you all. God bless you. Shakisha, blessings to each one of you. Have a great day.